Welcome everyone, and, and thank you so much for joining me here today at the Care West Colonel Belcher Continuing Care Home. Here in my riding of, uh, of Calgary Varsity, which I am so honored to, uh, to represent, I want to thank the leadership, the staff, and the residents at Care West for hosting today's event. On Tuesday, the Finance Minister tabled Alberta's government's plan to secure the province's future. A significant portion of that vision is to strengthen and transform Alberta's continuing care system. Alberta's seniors and persons with disabilities deserve high quality care in their homes and communities close to their families and friends. And our government is looking at better ways to support Albertans who need continuing care. Their families and caregivers, healthcare providers, operators, and the staff who provide that high quality care. Now, continuing care looks different to each Albertan who needs it. Last spring, we passed the Continuing Care Act in response to the growing needs of Albertans accessing these services. The act brings all the relevant legislation into one place to ensure consistency for services across our province. Before that, the care providers had to follow guidelines from multiple acts, many of which were outdated. Through extensive consultations with care providers, community and advocacy groups, and healthcare workers, we created the Continuing Care Act to update Alberta's standards and make sure our continuing care system meets the future needs of Albertans in our province. In its early days, continuing care for seniors and people with complex health care needs was primarily provided through hospital-based care. Today, publicly funded continuing care services and supports are provided in a variety of settings and programs, such as home and community care, designated supported living, long-term care, and palliative and end-of-life care. Because the needs of every Albertan are unique, the system has to provide a variety of options to meet those needs. We are heavily involving care operators to further update the regulations for continuing care to make sure the system is flexible, sustainable, and safe for everyone who needs care. Now, right now, seniors make up about 16% of Alberta's total population, almost 700,000 people, and, the, and they are the highest users of health care services. And this will continue to be the case as people live longer and deal with more complex health needs. And the need for continuing care will significantly increase over the next 10 years. We know the continuing care system needs to continually adapt to be more responsive to the needs of Albertans now and in the future. We have listened to public feedback and heard loud and clear that people are see, see aging differently than they have in the past. The need for change is captured in the reports from the facility-based continuing care review and the palliative and end-of-life care engagements. So since 2021, the government has responded to a number of the report's recommendations, like improving public reporting on inspections, eliminating ward rooms in continuing care homes, and expanding access to client-directed home care options. We rolled out the new client-directed home care invoicing model in Edmonton and Calgary in 2022, and we will be expanding the program across the province as part of the transformation plans moving forward. Alberta Health has also been working with our continuing care partners and health service providers to implement more recommendations from the two reports by adding more continuing care capacity, supporting seniors to stay in their homes longer with additional supports, particularly in rural areas, addressing staffing challenges, and improving the care that Albertans deserve. I am proud to, the, to announce that Budget 2023 delivers on these commitments. And I'd like to thank the Finance Minister for making continuing care a priority in Budget 2023. Alberta's government has made hist a historic investment of nearly $4.3 billion, a $570 million increase, more than 15% over last year, to expand continuing care programs and services for seniors and vulnerable Albertans. This includes $2 billion for community care, an additional $301 million, or 17.7% from 22-23, billion for continuing care homes, an increase of 9.4%, and $893 million for home care, 
$149 million more than last year. This funding also includes nearly $1 billion over the next three years to continue the needed transformation of the continuing care system. Budget 2023 will impact every area of the continuing care system and the broader health system so Albertans in all communities can get the prompt and quality care they expect and deserve. These investments will shift care to the community, enhance workforce capacity, increase choices for Albertans, and allow for system innovation and advance high quality care. Albertans will be supported to remain at home in their preferred location if they so choose. This is especially important in rural communities and a significant amount of this investment will be spent, spent there. Continuing care home residents will also benefit as staff will have more time to provide the person-centered care that residents need. The healthcare professionals in continuing care will be supported with more education and recruitment and retention strategies aimed at providing more full-time employment and benefits. We are also investing $89.5 million for the Continuing Care Capital Program in 23-24, and a total of $310 million over three years to modernize existing continuing care spaces. The program will also be used to develop culturally appropriate spaces to support Indigenous groups, create new innovative small care homes, and add new spaces in priority areas which that have the greatest need. We have also earmarked capital funding for new projects to expand capacity both in Calgary and in Edmonton. But I'll have more to say about those projects later. There's also funding for current continuing care capital projects already underway. Projects like the new Bridgeland Riverside Continuing Care Centre in Calgary that will receive 73.5 million over three years and over 90 million over three years to fund the, the completion of the Jean Zwazetsky Centre in Edmonton. In closing, I want to refer, reaffirm the Government of Alberta's commitment to strengthening our continuing care system, ensuring that every Albertan has the care they need where and when they need it. Transforming our continuing care system is a tremendous undertaking. Through the investments provided by Budget 2023, we are on track to make significant changes to the services and supports we provide to Albertans in the months and years to come. We will continue to work with our health system partners on innovative approaches to serve Albertans who need continuing care and other specialized services and support as their needs change. And I am confident that all this work combined will make our continuing care system more sustainable and improve health care outcomes for those accessing care now and into the future. So thank you again so much for coming and thanks again to the folks at Colonel Belcher for welcoming us here. Now I would like to welcome Faisal Kashaji, Board Chair of the Alberta Continuing Care Association to the podium to say a few words. Thank you, Minister. Good morning. I'm happy to be here on behalf of the Alberta Continuing Care Association. We are proud to be the voice of continuing care in Alberta. Our members provide care for over 35,000 Albertans in supportive living and long-term care facilities, as well as delivering over 5 million hours of home care services each year. On behalf of our members, the ACCA is pleased with the government's commitment to transforming the continuing care sector. The investments outlined in Budget 2023 will bolster care choices, improve quality of life, and support Albertans' ability to remain at home and in their community longer. Investing in the continuing care sector is vital, as it ensures that our rapidly aging population receives the care and support they need to live healthy and fulfilling lives. With this new funding, we can expect to see improvements in access to care, quality of care, our aging infrastructure, and the overall client, caregiver, and family experience. As one of Alberta's home care operators, I am personally pleased to see the significant investment of $893 million for home care. We know that the majority of Albertans, whether they live in rural areas or urban centres, wish to age in their own homes and communities as long as possible. Through increased home care funding, ageing in place becomes a reality, allowing seniors to stay at home where they feel more comfortable and secure with the people they love and trust the most. 
the new capital funding for continuing care projects will be a welcome lift. More than 50% of long-term care homes in the province are over 50 years old and no longer meet design standards. The capital funding will help operators upgrade and modernize facilities across the province, which in turn will better meet the needs of current and future residents. The investments outlined in Budget 2023 will not only benefit residents and home care clients, but also our valued health care workers who have been working tirelessly throughout the pandemic. The recently announced $158 million to address the health care worker shortage will undeniably help this sector. This funding will enable continuing care providers to hire more staff, provide additional training opportunities, and pr provide the conditions for optimized care. These measures will, in turn, lead to better patient outcomes and a more sustainable health care system. The ACCA applauds the government for recognizing the importance of investing in the continuing care sector and for taking bold action to support the seniors of Alberta. This budget marks a significant step forward for our health care system, and I'm confident that it will lead to positive changes for patients, caregivers, family members, health care workers, and the broader community in general. Thank you very much for this. I'll now ask Shauna Severson to come up and address the audience. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Faisal. Um, as Care West Board Chair, I am really pleased to be here today to share the news of this announcement. The last few years have not only been immensely challenging for our health care system, but they have revealed um, areas of need that we have for attention and improvement. Multiple outbreaks across the sector have, and increased pressure on continuing care operators have highlighted the need for this investment. Today's announcement is welcome news for Care West. Um, the continuing care sector as a whole. Um, this investment is going to help with the critical needs we need so that we can preserve the quality of life for all of our clients, residents, and um, families. It's also going to expand um, access to programs and services, which is really exciting, especially for somewhere here like Care West. The opportunity to continue to provide the exceptional care for those of us, in, for those in the community who need us the most also. I would like to also take a moment to acknowledge the Care West staff who pulled together to overcome the last years of the pandemic, and to the residents and clients and family members for their trust and adaptability for the last three years also. This investment will help us turn the corner towards a brighter future for the aging population. It will enable our continuing care system to better meet the needs of those requiring care, while enhancing workforce capacity, supporting innovation, and advancing excellence in programs and services. Care West looks forward to working with Alberta Health, Alberta Health Services, and other community partners for the provision of continued quality care for Calgarians now and in the future. So thank you very much. Uh, now I'm gonna hand it over to Buki, who is a nurse clinician here at Colonel Belcher. Thank you, Shona. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor for me to be here today with you. My name is Bukola Adeomi Akwidi. Um, my residents here refer to me as Buki. Helping others has been, is one of the reasons I embarked on a career in healthcare. And the residents here at the Belcher uh, motivates me and my colleague to come to work each day and provide the best care we can. My goal and my colleague's goal every day is to provide the best care for our residents and ensure they live life to the fullest. I love my job. I love to support people and help them and make difference in people's lives. And I can confidently say this is the same for most of my, res uh, my uh, colleagues. The last couple of years has been very challenging for all of us in continuing care. And my hope is that this um, investment would help us to change, um, will help us to change the situation and ensure we give the best care to the residents. Thank you, Minister Coppin, for continuing to partner with us 
and ensure all Albanians receive nothing but the best. I know this announcement have a tremendous impact within our community in the weeks and years to come. And I know this announcement will be welcomed by everyone. For me, I know this added funding would help myself and my colleagues and care providers around al -Badr to continue to support residents to achieve their best life and continue to provide improved quality of, um, of care for them. Thank you for inviting me to, to, to today's exciting announcement. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you to our speakers today uh, and to all the residents of the Colonel Belcher for joining us. Uh, that concludes the formal portion of our announcement today. Uh, we'll now begin the media question and answer portion um, of the announcement. Uh, for re reference, Lori Anderson, Chief Zone Officer from the Calgary Zone for AHS is also here if there are technical questions. Um, we ask that you have one question, one follow-up. Uh, try to keep on topic questions first. Um, please state your name and outlet at the beginning. We'll go to the room first. Yeah, so my name is Austin uh, Lee with CTV News Calgary. This one is for uh, Minister Copping. And Minister, I'm, I'm curious to get your thoughts. I know uh, just recently we saw a protest here outside AUPE, organized it uh, with several of the workers here. Um, what does this funding in this latest budget do to address some of those concerns that were brought up and is there an update on those discussions? Yeah, so, so the, the funding really is to, to address a number of issues. It's to address the uh, um, uh, hours of care, uh, so we'll be able to increase the hours of care uh, associated with the, um, uh, be able to provide the care to residents because we understand, you know, uh, and we heard Bookie speak, you know, very passionately about the, you know, the desire to provide the best care that they, they possibly can. Uh, so this is a this is a, a um, that it'll definitely assist in, in that regard, um, and then the, the the conversation or in regards to maps because there's also an issue in terms of uh, challenges of having the staff um, to be able to do the work and when and when you when you have a shortage of staff you get increase of overtime you get high levels of turnover, uh, and so part a big part of this initiative is to be able to address those challenges. Uh, we we heard loud and loud and clear in the facility based continuing care review. Uh, that the, re the, uh, the retention of staff is, is incredibly, inc incredibly difficult. So part of this funding um, is to deal with those issues. The $2 top up, which was actually given as part of the COVID response, that's gonna remain uh, as part of this. And there's also funding to enable operators, and we're gonna have conversations with operators how best to do it in terms of how do we provide benefits for staff? Uh, and then how do we also continue to you know, um, look at payment because there's, there's challenges in regards to payment to be able to address these issues. Now, some of those items are need to be, you know, uh, a discussion between us and funding to the uh, the organizations providing the care, uh, and then there will be conversations that, you know, if, we're, if you're touching wages and benefits, obviously that's going to have to involve negotiations with the union. Um, but you know, we believe that this funding and our approach is going to address many of the issues raised, like concerns about high levels of turnover, um, you know, dealing with issues within the uh, um, within the workforce. Um, and ensuring that we can attract and retain people uh, so we have you know, all the lines filled. Um, you know, people can stay more full-time jobs, right, so you don't have high turnover, and we can provide better care to Albertans. Yeah, you touched, on, you touched on my follow-up question there just regarding uh, retention and the, uh, the efforts that are in place right now, but I'm curious, uh, just to build off of that, are there any unique challenges here in Alberta when it comes to the retention of healthcare workers um, how, or I guess just how does Alberta stack up compared to uh, other provinces across the country when it comes to that regard? Yeah, there, there's not unique challenges. Uh, this is a issue that quite frankly, um, all uh, Canadian provinces are dealing with. And it, it, quite frankly, healthcare systems in the, in the Western world are dealing with these challenges. Um, I was very pleased a number of weeks ago to announce our um, health human resources strategy, um, which has multiple aspects to that, but a big part of that is um, is training and, and training locally uh, and very pleased also as part of budget 2023 uh, it builds on the investment we already made in budget 2022 and expanding thousands of uh, seats in our post-secondary institutions to increase supply 
uh, because that's going to be a critical component of it. Uh, but also, you know, we continue to do work in, in, you know, with um, you know, internationally trained nurses. Uh, we made an announcement with Minister Nicolaitis in regards to bursaries for um, those coming over um, to, uh, uh, to upskill. So, you know, they come over and they're even though they're trained as a nurse in a, uh, uh, in a, uh, a different country, for Philippines, for example, uh, to be able to go to a bridging program at, uh, at MRU to upgrade from an LPN to an RN and be working uh, uh, um, and be, be, be able to provide their services there. Uh, and, you know, scholarships uh, and bursaries to be able to support that as well. Uh, so this is part of an overall plan that, that we are uh, working at to increase uh, the health human resources. It's working. We have more nurses, more doctors than ever, ever before, but we still need more, and we understand that. So um, I was very pleased as part of Budget 2023 uh, we expanded on the work we already started in Budget 2022, and uh, we're continuing to work on this uh, on the immigration front uh, so that we make sure that we get the staff to support um, the, Alber the health care needs that Albertans have. Good morning, Minister. Uh, Scott Dipple from CUC uh, here in Calgary. I'm just wondering if you can provide a bit more detail on the, uh, the funding for Bridgeland Riverside Continuing Care. As you know, uh, construction ground to a halt for a few months last year. Uh, I still don't think we know the details of what the issue there was, but the additional money here, um, is that previously budgeted or is this additional money because that's what's required to complete the project? Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm going to have to get back to you on the details. My understanding is that this is the, the money for the, pro for the, uh, the project um, because I'm not sure if we don't know what the additional money will be required to complete it, but we have, uh, so, but I'll have to double check that. Um, you know, there, there were some, um, uh, issues identified um, with the with the uh, the project. Um, my understanding is that they they are being they have uh, or in the uh, being rectified. Um, but we, uh, long story short, we are committed to completing that project, and we'll do what we need to do to get it done. Okay, and uh, Minister, can I also get your thoughts about the uh, I guess the appearance of Dr. Cowell charging fourteen hundred dollars for a, a limo ride to Edmonton? Uh, is that a good use of public money when less expensive methods were obviously available? Yeah, I, I fully appreciate that the um, the appearance of that looks like it, it, it looks costly, and, and I and I appreciate that. Um, but again, you know, we hired Dr. Cowell uh, to come in, um, drive changes faster through our our, uh, our healthcare system through AHS. AHS is a you know sixteen billion dollar organization. Um, you know. The, the choice was made, and this is all within government policy, to, to hire a car so we can actually do work in the car, uh, take calls using confidential documents, do a bunch of meetings uh, in Edmonton, including with me, and then return back the, uh, re return back the same day. Actually, when you, when you take a look at the cost of, you know, either flying or, and, uh, um, and uh, staying at a hotel and, and you know, uh, cabs, et cetera, that kind of stuff, this actually is, is, is comparable. And this allows them to get more work. So, no, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the optics of the, this looks expensive, but quite frankly, you know, we've asked Dr. Cowell to come in and quickly help move our, our, our system forward and, and expedite a number of the measures. And I was very pleased. Like for, uh, earlier this week, we did the 90-day report, and uh, change is happening. We have stabilized the system. Uh, we have wait times coming down, and we're going to continue to drive forward. And 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 quite frankly, we need. Uh, Dr. Cowell and our entire executive team focused on that. So I, I appreciate the optics, but again, you know, when I take a look at the best choice for, um, you know, in a $16 billion system, being focused on that to be able to drive uh, healthcare, better healthcare outcomes for all, for all Albertans, um, you know, and, and you do the cost comparison, you know, I recognize the optics, but, but we need Dr. Cowell to be focused on that to be able to get the health healthcare outcomes that we need. Okay. Right, do you have a follow-up? Uh, if I could follow up on that one, Minister, it would be going forward, is that still acceptable practice or is that sort of a, if that's the option, if that's the best option, fine, we can do that. Or is that just going to be normal now? Well, you know, going forward, we, it, and it's interesting because Dr. Cowell and I, we try to actually minimize the amount of trips he makes. Um, you know, some face-to-face -face do, it, do it online and actually there's lots of trips he, do, he doesn't make. So we are conscious of trying to minimize over, like, you know, we still need to be conscious of, uh, of cost, but... Again, we need Dr. Cowell and the whole team focused on delivering results for uh, AHS and Alberta Health, and they're doing that. Thank you. We have what time for one more question? Operator, can you put through our first caller on the line? 
First caller is Jennifer Lee, CBC News. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my question, and this is for the minister as well. I, I just want to pick up on the um, uh, Dr. Cowell's expense um, of $1,400 for a car and driver in a single day. I mean, if you look at expense reports for other executives, uh, former board members, that trip can be done for less um, in a single day. And I, I think there are Albertans out there for whom $1,400 is a lot of money. You know, they're struggling financially. So what, what do you say to those Albertans? No, again, as I, as I already said, I, I appreciate, you know, that looks like a, uh, you know, $1,400 um, looks like a lot of money, and, and is it a lot of money? But, but again, you know, um, we asked Dr. Cowell to deliver on results so we can actually fix the health care system. Um, this was comparable in terms of, you know, other, other options in, uh, for, that particular, for that particular day. Uh, and, uh, you know, as, as indicated in the 90-day report, uh, delivering results, uh, and we're going to continue to drive forward so we can actually get better results for, for, uh, for Albertans and ensure that they get the health care that they deserve when and where they need it. Thanks, Jane. Do you have a follow-up? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, thanks. I think frontline workers, too, are, are frustrated because they, you know, the hospitals, they say are still under stress and that they've been asked, you know, continually to do more with less. So what do you say to them, and do you think perhaps this warrants any kind of um, action by your government or AHS to rethink its spending moving forward? Yeah, so, so once again, I want to thank all of our uh, tremendous healthcare workers across our entire system, both with AHS and, and outside AHS, for the work that they do every day. As we heard earlier, uh, it's been challenging times. Um, very, um, very pleased that you know we are continuing to invest in our healthcare system to build, uh, to build capacity and, and support workers in delivering the care that uh, that they need to deliver. Um, again, this uh, uh, the, the choice in terms of and the dollar amounts associated with that is within within government policy, uh, and we're going to continue to focus on delivering the best results of our healthcare system for Albertans. Thanks very much. Um, I think that's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you, Lou, for coming out. Thanks, everybody.